Hi there, and welcome to this lecture where we're going to be having a look at loop recording. We're then going to show you how you can go through and choose your favourite bits from different takes and create a comp with these. One thing I'd like to mention is you should make sure you have your audio interface set up correctly, which we have covered in an earlier lecture. So we've previously showed you how we can record into the playlist using the cycle region. But sometimes when you're recording, you want to loop the section over and over again so you can get a number of takes and then choose the best one out of it. So I'm just going to start setting up so we're ready to record again. I want to record at the start of this song. In the playlist, I'm going to scroll over to the beginning. I'm going to hold Command on a Mac or Control on Windows. I've got Snap enabled, so we've got an 8 bar loop here. I'm just going to open the mixer and rename the recording track we had set up here, Synth Recording. So just to quickly go over the recording track again, I want to make sure we don't have any channels going to this mixer insert. This one number 20 is still free. So I'm just going to right click at the top of it here and go to rename. I'm just going to call this synth recording. This time, the input is going to be input number three in my audio interface. So at the top of the inspector here, I'm just going to change this to input three. I'm going to make sure this track is record armed by clicking on this icon at the bottom here. Now when it's glowing red, it's ready to record. I'm just going to close the channel rack so I can see more of the playlist. Now I'm just going to make sure I've got a suitable level coming in. So I'm going to turn the gain up on my interface and play some chords. Okay, that seems fine. One thing to note, I'm actually recording an external synthesizer. So what we'll be recording is audio. This is the same as having a microphone or an electric guitar, for example, plugged in into your interface. Now one thing I want to do is add a new track in my playlist, as I'd like this audio to be recorded just below the drums at the start of the track. So I'm going to right click on track 2 here, and go down to insert 1. This has just created a new track in the playlist. So now the audio we record will be recorded onto this track. Now to enable loop recording, I need to click on this loop recording icon in the transport section. When it's orange, it's enabled. So what this means is once we get to the end of these eight bars, it'll start recording again from bar one, and it will keep recording for as many times as we leave it rolling. I'm going to make sure I've got my count in on, because I would like one bar count in before I start recording. And I'm going to make sure I'm on song mode. I'm just going to open the mixer again. Now I just want to remind you, you don't want any plugins in the inspector at the moment, as these will be burnt into our audio recording in the playlist. Okay, I'm ready to start recording. So I'm just going to go up to the top and press the record icon in the transport section, and this box will appear again. I'd like to record audio into the playlist, so I'm going to choose this second option. Now, as soon as I click on this, playback will begin. We'll have one bar counting, and the recording will start. None of those takes were quite right, but now we're going to listen through to them individually and choose the best bits from each take. One thing to note, each of these takes has been greyed out, and they've actually been muted. This is the default setting when loop recording in FL Studio. So, if I unarm the recording and play the track back, we won't actually hear any of these takes. So, what we need to do is access the mute tool. So simply click on this icon here, or use the keyboard shortcut T. 
Remember to turn off the piano keyboard in FL Studio if you want to use these shortcuts. Right, now we have the mute tool up. If I click on this top audio file, you'll see it's no longer greyed out and we'll be able to hear it. Okay, I like the first two chords there, but the last two were not great. So, what we can do is comp these different takes together. I'm just going to listen to the next one. The last chord there was obviously wrong. The first two chords of this take were also incorrect. So what we can do in FL Studio is compile a good take out of all of these. That's called comping. So I'm just going to access the slice tool, which is this tool at the top here. The shortcut for that is C. Remember you need to have the playlist window in focus to use these shortcuts. What this tool does is simply cuts the audio file. So if I click and drag, it's cut that into two files. Sometimes when you're comping, you don't want it to be snapped onto the bar, so you can make a cut between the different notes. So I'm just going to press undo. Now to temporarily disable the snap, I'm going to hold alt when I use this slice tool. So I remember the first two chords of this take were good, so I'm going to make a cut between the first two and the last two chords. Now I'm going to press T to access the mute tool. So now we'll hear the first two chords. I seem to remember the third chord out of the second take was quite good. So again, I'm going to go back to the slice tool using the shortcut C, then hold Alt on my keyboard to temporarily disable snap and make a cut here. So you click and drag from the top of the audio file down to the bottom to make the cut. I'm going to make a cut again just after this chord. Now I'm going to make a cut at the same place in the last take as I would like to use that final chord. I'm just going to access the mute tool again by pressing T. And now when we play back, we'll hear the first two chords coming from the first take, the third chord coming from the second take, and then the fourth chord coming from the third take. I'm just going to press play again by using the space bar. Okay, that's not perfect, but that'll do for this example. To keep this session organized, what we can do is consolidate these files into a new audio file. So I'm just going to access the draw tool by pressing P on my keyboard. And now I'm going to hold Command and Shift or Control and Shift on Windows and click on the three parts that we'd like to consolidate into a new audio file. So now we have these three parts selected. We want to go up to the playlist options at the top left here of this drop down arrow. Under here, we're going to go to tools and select consolidate playlist selection and then go from selection start. This box will appear with numerous different settings, but you can just leave them at the default settings for now. Now, when we press start, it'll turn these three different clips into one new audio file. Now you can see we have the three original takes that we recorded in loop mode, but we also have this new audio file up here, the synth recording consolidated. It has muted the initial three recordings, and now when we play back, We have a new audio file using just the sections that we like the most. So this technique is great for when recording vocals for example, as you can get the singer to do a number of different takes and then choose the best bits. One thing that I like to do when loop recording 
is making sure I've created a new track in the playlist window whenever I start the loop recording, because it means it keeps all the recordings in a folder under this new track. So now if I click on this arrow here, it'll collapse this folder, and this just helps to keep our session nice and organized. If we ever change our mind about the takes we've used, we can always open the folder, make a new comp, and then consolidate this. So it keeps your options open, but also keeps your project very organized. So in this lecture, we've gone over how you can set up your recording, enable loop mode, record in loop mode, and then use the slice and mute tools to make a comp of your recordings. We've then consolidated this into a new audio file. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.